So I hope you slept well, because I don't want to make you sleeping. <laughs> so today we are celebrating in the church a great feast. It is the last uh, Sunday of the ordinary time, and we are celebrating in the church Christ the King. And this is not for nothing uh, that we are here. Particularly with all the reflection that we have done regarding uh, this preparation of our hearts, our soul, our mind, and also uh, for the refuge that we want to provide in the will of the Father for Jesus, for the kingdom of Jesus, for his remnant people, who the one who want to come to him, that they will find place, a place first who is with us and a place who will be with him because as we just sing we are in him and he is in us so uh, today i would like to open this reflection with a text of uh, timothy <clears throat> he said uh, you must understand this that in the last days uh, distressing time will come for people will be lovers of themselves Lovers of money, booster, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, inhuman, implacable, slanders, profane gates, brutes, hater of good, teachers, reckless, swollen with conceit, lover of pleasure rather than lover of God, holding to the outward form of goodliness, but denying its power. So it's amazing to read this text. It's in the letter of Timothy, applied to our last days. And uh, you know, 2,000 years after, we read this text and we seem to be in, you know, and we are not far from all this uh, situation everywhere. You can go everywhere now. It's a, you, you know what it's making a sign? A sign to read the, the sign of time. It's the universal situation of the world. You can go everywhere now and you can see that the people are suffering from different misery everywhere. Many, many are suffering because of the disturbing of these people who want to control, dominate, and make the people under their boots. And we can see that in different countries. And Maria de Esperanza, you know, have this uh, revelation that everything will start with Venezuela. And we know the situation in Venezuela. The people are starving over there. Because this man, this man who, well, who was well known by the church, imagine, and that the church in the beginning is support. And now he's ruling the church under his boots. You see, huh? so many things happen everywhere in the world. Look in Hong Kong, the situation. Look in France, the situation. In Chile, in different countries. Just like last week, we have six revolution on the street in different countries. So it's coming from everywhere. And Jesus has talked about that. And, but when we are looking with the kingdom of God, we are looking with a king. And this king is Jesus himself. And when we are seeing this picture of the king, the sacred heart of Jesus, we know that the sacred heart of Jesus will act, first of all, with love. And this is the meaning of the apparition of the sacred heart throughout the history of the church. First, with Saint Maria uh, Alacoque. Yeah, in English, I think. Margaret Alacoque, yeah. And after that, with the last one was, you know, with Sister Faustina that you just heard many messages. 
But in 1930, when Sister Faustina received the image by uh, Jesus himself, and he asked her to give this image to the world, immediately he said that first he will come with his merciful heart. And after that, he will be the Enlightenment Day, when he will show to the people they stayed, you know. I have the blessing to win with Padre Pio in uh, heaven. And I went in purgatory, but I asked not to go in hell. <laughs> I have enough of hell on earth. <laughs> I saw so many times the face of the devil that I didn't see to know to see what's happened downstairs. So, yes. You know, every time we exorcise, uh, it's amazing because the spirit doesn't go high. He goes down, he enters in the ground. And uh, when we, uh, we exercise, we notice that the, the spirit enters in the ground. And notice also when you have, a, if you have received that as, uh, in your day, when we pray over the people and they have, uh, you know, uh, some kind of oppression of them, they feel that it's going down, you know, it's enter in the earth. My believing, it's just my believing. It's Michel Rodrigue believing. The church, I doesn't know that the church affirmed that in the, all the, the readings I did, but this is my personal point of view here. I think that the hell is in the middle of the earth. Yeah, this is what I think. Because, you know, uh, if I think about Saint Tyranny, Saint Tyranny has built, uh, you know, in Europe, in Lyons, he built a church, and it was a druid place when he, he built this church. And uh, where was the portal of hell? It means it was a hole that they have, the Druids have digged inside of the, the earth. And uh, the, the, the devil came out from this when they have their ceremony. So uh, because Irenaeus knows that, you know what, he built a church over there <laughs> and he put the, uh, on the portal of hell, he put the basin for the baptismal fount. And he said to the people, never let the holy water go out of this basin. It's amazing. Yeah? So I know that because, you know, I enter in this church to visit the church. And when I was there, I enter immediately. I know that was there a portal of hell in the church. And I said that to the guy who was making the, you know, the visit. I said, we have a portal of hell here. He looked at me. Which church? Uh, in Lyon, the, the ancient church of Lyon in France. Oh. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I offer you, Lord, as a sacrifice. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, and the guy has, has said to me, yeah, it is true, but nobody knows that. And he said, this is the story of that. And he gave us the story to uh, the group who was there, you know. It's a big bassin, you know. Iron one, not iron one, stone one, you know, big basin. Oh. So what I'm telling you is because today uh, when we are regarding the world, we know that many things happen. And, uh, you know, all this uh, St. Thomas of Aquinas, when he have gave the treatise of the angel, you know, he explained to us that uh, the angel have a specific uh, role to protect the world and to balance everything in the world as the harmony of God. And they are uh, looking for that. You know, this is their role also uh, for the people. But the devil tried to broke this harmony in the world. And how he do it, some, sometimes he's allowed by the Eternal Father to make earthquake. Volcanoes. And different things who will hit you know, the stabilization of the world. 
in the last days, we know that uh, the elements of this world will be shaken. And it means that uh, it's another sign, what we call a universal sign. The first sign is the confusion everywhere. The confusion are under, you know, every nation now. And we can see that when we listen to the news. But the other sign is, do you notice how many uh, earthquakes, how many tornadoes, how many, uh, you know, volcanoes around the world now? It's a second sign. Everything is surrender under Christ the King. And because of this, the devil can do nothing if he's not allowed to do it. Why God allowed him to do it, you think? To make us aware, you know, that what will happen if we continue on this way. And this is the fact. He wants to protect us but because our freedom is there, and we are, you know, stubborn, so what's happened? He gave us some external sign to awake us for our inner sense of his presence. And this is how he worked with us. One of, of these uh, big uh, heaven was, uh, you know, under a condition. It was a chastisement that was, was announced in Garamandal, you know. And in Garamandal, it was an apparition in the beginning of the Council of the Vatican II. So many people today, uh, you know, are against Vatican II. They said that's not a true council. So, you know, everything is in the end of the Lord. We forgot that. And it means that the teaching of uh, the Council, Vatican II, is not bad. It's always a matter of brain. It's between the ear. <laughs> you know? You can say something, and another can take what you have said. And because he hear, in a way that he want to hear, he or she will transform what you have said. It's always a matter of brain between the ear. <laughs> yeah, it's true. So this is why now the many try to, you know, diminish the importance of this council. And inside of this, we have Garabandal who have given us, you know, a message. A message who is also a message regarding a chastisement. And uh, we have also this message who was given in uh, this little, on this little country, the Japanese country, in Akita. I have the message of Akita. And notice that uh, the Virgin of Akita is the Virgin appear also in uh, Amsterdam, you know, Our Lady of all, of all Nations. So I would like to read this message from the sister Agnes Katsuko Sasagawa. I hope I pronounce well. Thank you. <laughs> this is a message. As I told you, if my people do not repent and better themselves, the Father will inflict a terrible punishment on all humanity. It will be a punishment greater than the flood, such as one will never have seen before. Fire will fall from the sky, and I will wipe out a great part of humanity. The good, the bad, sparing neither priest or nor faithful. The survivor will find themselves so desolate that they will envy the dead. The only harms 
which will remain for you will be the rosary and the sign left by my son. Each day recite the prayers of the rosary. With the rosary, pray for the Pope, the bishops, and the priest. She announced the chastisement, and she asked to pray for the Pope, the bishops, and the priests, because they will have a role inside of these last days. A role of confirm their brothers and sisters and to fight against the Antichrist. The work of the devil will infiltrate even into the church in such a way that one will see cardinal opposing cardinal. Have you seen that? Yes. <laughs> okay, I'm not crazy. <laughs> Or we are all crazy at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> and bishops against other bishops. The priests who venerate me will be scorned and opposed by their confrères. Have you seen that, Father? You, <laughs> you know, idea I was in the, we have a, <laughs> a synod. Uh, it's diocese and synod. And I was sitting at this table, the priest was there, and the commentary was done for this part. This part we must do, we must do to the bishop. So I was there and uh, I said, no, 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 no. I said, if you want my point of view, we must start with a prayer to the Holy Spirit. I said, and we must start now. Because we are saying everything without praying. This is not the way for a synod. And I said, I suggest that we will have this prayer an half hour every morning and every session that we will do before the session. So a priest was there and he take his suitcase, you know, and he threw it to me in front of the bishop. So I just did that and the suitcase passed, you know. <laughs> so I take the suitcase, I open it, was nothing inside. I look at him and say, it's nothing inside. <laughs> the bishop was completely, what's happened? You know, opposition. <laughs> yeah. The church and altars will be vandalized. The church and altars, what it's mean? Reflect a little bit. Eucharist, yeah. It will be sacrilege in the church. And one of the signs, the third one, will be the last one, I assure you, it will be the abomination of the desolation entering in the temple. It will be the Holy Eucharist. The church will pass through the passion of Christ. Because Jesus passed in his passion, he is the head of the church. So his body will pass through the same passion of Christ. And through the passion of Christ, we saw St. Peter denying three times. And, you know, he cried after because with the gift of the Holy Spirit, he realized that he had done. We will see the same thing in our days. The first betray was matrimony. You know, the, the text of Maurice Letizier, it's not the text who's the problem. It's the note, the footnote. What was not written in the text was put on the footnote. And everyone goes not for the text, but for the footnotes. Like today when they read the Bible to you. They, they look the footnote, but they don't pray with the text. And they preach the footnote to you. This is what happened. It's the same thing with this text. The second one, you know, will be the priesthood. 
Because to modify the Holy Eucharist, you need a new generation of priests who will be less form and they will have less knowledge and they will not take care of the things because their doctrinal formation will be so less that they will not take care. They will not understand what they were doing. And this type, this type of generation will be important because if you want to touch the mystery of Christ in the Holy Eucharist, you must touch in the same time the priesthood. Because the priesthood do what Jesus asked us to do. Do it in memory of me. This is where he has ordained his apostle. To the mystery of the Holy Eucharist. And when the priest is doing this, he made the Holy Eucharist in a certain way. The priest is made also by the Holy Eucharist to do what Christ asked to do. If you want to touch the body of Christ in the Holy Eucharist, you must touch the priesthood first. So it will be under a reflection, some uh, reflection regarding the celibacy of the priesthood and some reflection regarding also the possibility of woman deacon who will just open the door for the next step this is and now it's under it's under the way and uh, the pope will be the one who will make the decision with all this and we must pray for him he has given so much power to the Episcopal Conference in every country that in a certain way he has painted himself in the corner. Because they are pushing on him and in the same time they are saying we will do it. They have the power. This is exactly what's happened in Germany. And many people are looking for Amazon Synod. But the most dangerous part is Germany. Because in Germany, during the Amazon Synod, a delegate was made because they have already decided to marry gay people and to have a mass who can accommodate every denomination. It's already in the plan in German, Germany. So the Pope, in the same time, when he was at the Amazon, received the delegate and he tried with the delegate to find a way of peace and, to, and affirming that it's not the way of the communion in the church to keep the unity of the church. They said that everyone was uh, happy of their encounter. Everyone was looking over there and the devil was always there. <laughs> It will be, you know, the, f the second and the third denied. And when the third deny will happen, Christ the King will be through the hands and the scepter of Christ the King. And I would like to finalize the text uh, that I received for this year in the 3rd of January 2019. It's in your booklet, this one. I recall you when the Eternal Father, we were always in the, the time of Christmas, and when the Eternal Father, you know, gave me this text, uh, first of all, I asked him to, I'm all, you know, it's not me who decide when the Father will talk. Some people come to me and said, ask the Father, ask the Father. I don't have a red phone, me. I'm not the President of the United States. You know, so, you know, the father answer when you want. And one thing that the father asked me, and I say that to you, two things. First thing, I don't want to forget. You must be discreet. I said that yesterday, I think. 
about what you are seeing, how you are seeing that, and where you are seeing that. And when you do this thing like that, ask, please, the seal of the blood of Jesus over your conversation. Because you just, you just give the tool to Satan to attack you after. You know, a general who go to the war doesn't make all the camera coming and said, OK, I will show you the plan where I will attack now. <laughs> you know, they know where to shoot. Huh? This is exactly what we do when we have no discretion and no reserve. Because the devil here is still an angel, more intelligent than you and me. This is why I never argue with the devil. Some exorcists, you know, try to have a conversation with the devil. This is crazy. And after that, they said what the devil said. What is that? <laughs> He's just a liar. Do you think that he will change because we exorcise him? Yeah. No way. He's still a liar. So don't use this word. They are words against God. Sorry. <laughs> and this is important to realize that everything, you know, from the Father, I said to the, oh yeah, the second thing I, I was forgetting. Some people ask me, my husband, my cousin, my out dead, is dead since, and where he is now? <laughs> if you surrender everything to Jesus, you will never ask this question. We don't have there to judge the people. And we are not there to know before the time what is the judgment of God for a person. We will have the knowledge of this, I advise you, on the last judgment. You know, it's in the Bible of Matthew. You will have this last judgment. Everyone will be there, and we will know who are going downstairs and who is going upstairs. <laughs> so don't ask for that. It doesn't please the Father at all, and I will never answer this, OK? Because uh, it's too much curiosity. We must dare to pray for them. If they are in heaven already, your prayers will go for help another. A matter or not, your prayer will be never lose. You can be sure. So I said to the father, if you want to talk this year, I'm available. And a few days after, he answered me, and he said, Michel, it's not me who will give you the message this year. I was uh, astonished about that. Because he, in the same time, he was sad when he said that to me. He said, this is St. Michael who will come to you and get, deliver to you my message. And at that moment, you will understand why. So this is the message of St. Michael. Michel, you have been wearing my name since the day of your baptism, which was celebrated in the parish church of St. Michael. I was born in St. Michael in Squatec. My mom has no more name because we were 22. <laughs> and she doesn't know which name she will give me. So she said, I will give him the name of the parish, who was St. Michael. So this is I am here for you. And I am proud to have St. Michael as patron. So you and I, bound by the Father's will and the precious blood of Jesus, who saved the world from the horror of sin, through the holy body of Christ, which is the Catholic Church, from the mouth of St. Michael, you know? And I, uh, I say to you already that when the day of the warning will come, everyone will recognize the Catholic Church as the Church of Christ. Okay? So we don't, uh, 
until that time, we don't have to, to say to that, nah, 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 you not in the right. <laughs> We must stay humble, you know? Never point the others with, nah, 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 nah. It's not good. <laughs> huh? so, when I was young, mon père peut battre ton père, my father can buy, you know, can <laughs> punch you. <laughs> Father, you know, we were like that you know, when we are, but no more when we are full Christian. <laughs> he said, we and I, we serve the one Savior. So when every word given in this message are so important, you remember now what they will implement is a new religion. You know, they will implement a new religion. They first prepare the people with the new age stuff. It was around the world, you know. And, but now they will implement this new religion with primitive ritual. You know, the primitive ritual will present different God. And will present different spirit from this, their God. And soon you will see that they will venerate, you know, they will adore the wood. Oh, I saw that sometime. You know, some people goes around and embrace the wood. Ah. <laughs> and I ask one of them, what are you doing there? <laughs> and, and she answered, oh, I take the energy of the wood. I said, I don't know why you call this liquid in the wood, you know? Sap. 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 OK. I said, don't put the sap in your blood. You will die with that. <laughs> it's crazy, huh? A man came, and you know, they want a funeral for, for this one. And uh, at the table, they, he said, oh, now he's so well. I said, why? He said, because he's in the bush. In the bush? What he's doing there? They said, yeah, he's in the tree. I, so, I said, I hope they will not, a lumb, you know, a, a lumberjack will cut the tree. You understand? This new type of religion. Some have, you know, they, they take the, the stone and they put them to them. And, um, <laughs> And more they want their um, more the, the big is a stone. I said, don't drop in the water with that. <laughs> this is important to realize. This last day, distressing time will come. You know, this is what we are. Yes, they will implement this new religion with these primitive rites. And through this rite, you know, it will become a kind of uh, an opening, uh, an opening a religion for every denomination. And at that moment, you will feel that it will be has universal fraternity. It means just horizontal. Universal fraternity. And after that, you know, they will be able to accommodate everyone inside of this. And what will happen to Jesus? He will, he will be put on a side. He will become a master among other masters in their philosophy of life. So it means he will not be the only mediator between humanity and the Father. And this is why, you know, St. Michael said, we serve the one Savior. I come as the messenger of the Eternal Father for the Apostolic Fraternity, Saint Benedict Joseph Labri, and for all those who hear this call. This message is more than a message, it's a call for you. Time and again, in the past, the Most Holy Mother of God has invited humanity to repent and return to his son Jesus. The various apparitions throughout the world 
have revealed the need to return to Christ through the confession of sins, the recitation of the rosary, and a sincere piety towards the Holy Eucharist. Several messages were sent to humanity to warn, warn of communism and practical atheism invading the world and societies. The perversion of and blasphemies of men against God and against life in all its form have multiplied to such as an extent that purification is now necessary. Until that moment when God said, now he used the future before with me. He said, it will and after now, you know. It will always in the future form. But here, it is in the present form. So this is why the Father cannot give the message this year. Because if he has gave this message in the present time, it will already be there. This is what it means. In a certain way, he has given an extension time. He has extended the time to advise us and to make us prepared. Renew your consecration. And he gave what is our preparation now. What we have to do to be ready. Renew your consecration to the holy hearts of Jesus and Mary. All those who have taken home the holy family. We blessed yesterday. And the Christmas crib will be protected. <laughs> Be careful to keep your heart alive by keeping all the wonders the Lord has done for you throughout your life. And this is important. Well, yes, we can focus what we have done wrong, but we can also focus what God has done for us. This is more important. You know, our life has to be happy. Our life has to be under the, the, bless, the blessing of the Lord. And when you awake in the morning, first thing, thank you, Lord, because I breathe. <laughs> thank you, Lord, because you gave me the air to breathe. <laughs> and breathe. And after that, you know, when you stand, thank you for the water. Many don't have the water to take their shower. It's true. So, and after that, you know, you go and you have your lunch, your breakfast. You put the, the toast in the toaster and you boom, you have the toaster bang in your plate. So you can say, thank you, Lord, for the bread. Thank you, Lord, for the toaster. Thank you, Lord, for the toast in my plate. Bang, da dang. <laughs> and put the butter on and eat it with joy. Oh, you know, Father, I don't like this toaster. I put my toast in, and when my toast is ready, I have to put it in my plate, and when I come on to, to put my butter on, the toast is already cold. <laughs> this is important. The wonders of God. How beautiful you are. Are you shy? No, because it's true. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> we have to look ourselves with our beauty also. Look me. <laughs> oh, you can look on the side if you want. <laughs> I'm a child of God. You know, I go to the mirror in the morning. I know my hair how like that and la la. I know that I have some things here, you know. <laughs> but I'm happy to see me. <laughs> you know? Yeah, sure. This is important, to be happy with what we have, you know. This is the grace. This is the grace. And this is the kingdom right there. The kingdom of God is here. Is here when we are with him here. You know? The people think about the future. They think about the past. They don't live their life. So they come to me sometimes with all the thing in front or all the thing in the back. 
And I said to them, where are you in the present time? <laughs> it's true. We have been developed since we were young to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, yin, 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 yin. and we want more. Huh, 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 huh. You know? <laughs> we never satisfied with what we have. The quantity become our evaluation of life. We are not judged on the quantity that we possess. We will be judged with the being that we have to love and serve and welcome our neighbors. This is the life. I don't worry about my tomb, me. You know? Imagine the tomb that I can have. Ha! With my scapular, it's good, you know? Boom in the, tr the hole. And he said, a great darkness advance on the world. And soon the eyes of the children of God will see how the earth is defiled by sin. Soon the eyes of the children of God, the one who, are, who will say yes to Jesus, in their life, after the warning time, they will walk for their refuge. This is the Psalm 91 that he has given me. They will say to the Lord, you who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, my refuge, my fortress. He will be our refuge and our fortress. And the first refuge who is given to us through several, several apparitions is the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Before to have a safe place that we call physical refuge, we have a spiritual refuge with the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And both hearts are combined together. This is the sacred heart of Jesus. When he gave me this psalm, he have explained me that after the warning, as uh, Noah was, we will be healed. Heal our toxic emotion. Heal from our, you know, dependency. Heal about our conception of our fatherhood and our motherhood. It means that all our feeling will be under the peace of Christ himself. This peace will be so deep inside of us. When we will walk with the flame of the angel until we reach the refuge. We will walk as a neutral attitude. Because we know that all the mankind, all person on earth, have been under the same experience to see Jesus. They have made their free choice during the time allowed to them. So it will not be the time to run after them. God knows that. It will be the time to obey to God. This obedience will act with the neutral attitude of feeling come from the deep peace given by grace from the Lord Jesus. And it will be so important. When Noah entered in the ark, the people around him were yelling at him. Noah entered with his family and closed the door. It was the will of the eternal one. Because these people have made many things against the will of the Eternal One. He has to purify the earth at the time of Noah to make sure that the line of the just, just will persevere until the coming of Jesus when he born. So he will do exactly the same thing with us. And so this is important psalm that he has instructed me. The refuge is first the heart of the Virgin Mary. 
and you will say, my God, him in whom I trust. Jesus revealed himself and said to Sister Faustina, as the king of kings, for this particular time of the church, say, Jesus, I trust in you. And when Jesus said that to Sister Faustina, it means when I say to Jesus, I trust in you, he answered back, I trust in you, Michelle. Do you believe that adoration is unique? No, just not, not one way. The way of our relation with God, it's a covenant. A covenant relation between him and me. So when I said to Jesus, I trust in you, it means that he answered me, I trust in you also. I trust in you for the gift that I have given to you, for all the talents that I have complimented you. And I trust in you because, you know, I have created you since the beginning, that when you were in the womb of your mother, and then, you know, you receive this grace, this magnificent grace of your own baptism that was caused for me, my blood on the cross. I trust in you because you have my life in your life. Don't go and swallow the sap of the tree. <laughs> it means nothing inside of this. No, he trusts in me and he trusts with all his heart. He has infinite trust in me. So this is why, Jesus, I have also infinite trust in you. Yes. It's important, you know. And he continued. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the dead, deadly pestilence. You know, when I was in, uh, in west of Canada, I was at the Banff, and we have a big banquet there. And then uh, it was the assembly with the priest. And uh, on the side, we have the restaurant. On the other side, we have the, the, the hospital. I don't know why, but. <laughs> <laughs> but at that moment, you know, I was there, and I commend a salad. A salad. 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 <laughs> so. <laughs> and uh, I eat it. And suddenly, a pain came, oh, almost right away, in my feet. It was so strong, so strong, and coming, going, and going. I said, what is that? I think I have a heart attack. And I, I, I stand, and I begin to walk to the hospital who was facing the restaurant, you know, <laughs> to cross the street. And more I go, more I cannot walk. It was terrible. So I arrived at the, at the door of the hospital with my four, my four legs. <laughs> you know? And then, you know, I said, I think I have a heart attack. Oh, boy. You know, when you say that in the hospital, they take you and put you in the hand and <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> and it was. And they take some Paul, make the test and everything. They said, no, 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 it's not a heart attack. I said, God be blessed. It will be my 9 one you know? <laughs> so it was something else. He said, what's happened to you? I said, it's, my, it's inside of me, and you know, it's in my feet, foot, and it's going really high and so painful. I think it will crack my bone, and you know, it was so painful. He put the X, you know, they have a machine for the X-ray. He put the X-ray there, and he can see the result immediately. He said, it's impossible. It's impossible. So it was a Russian doctor. He said, it's impossible. He said to the nurse, get me all the anti-poison that you have here. So she arrived with a table. <laughs> <laughs> like that, and he start to needle me every, you know, I think he gave me 50 uh, needles. He said, I just uh, knock it. You know. So he said, I don't understand. I said, what do you mean? He said, this is, you know, I am a Russian doctor from the army of Russia. And I came in, 
And uh, as uh, you know, when you quit, uh, you flee uh, from. Yeah, and now I am a doctor here, and you know, I am a scientific, and I have created this poison. It's an arm, and I destroy all of them before to quit. And they are here. I said, it's impossible. I destroy it. I said, I don't know if you destroy that, but it's in my leg, you know. <laughs> Don't make a crisis for yourself, make a crisis for me, you know. <laughs> but he sent me in Montreal because they have all the, the medicine that I need. So it took five days to go there, imagine. Because, you know, I have to drive a car. And then, you know, the, uh, the doctor in Mont Montreal gave me everything. But, you know, what consoled me? She was so nice. <laughs> a nice lady. <laughs> it's always uh, like a bomb on the, on the pain, you know. <laughs> and um, she, she explained to me that it was an arm, what we call uh, a weapon. A weapon. Bi yeah, biological weapon created by this doctor. And he, uh, she had to advise uh, the head of the, you know, the, 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 the armies in Canada because they saw it. But apparently that it, I was just the case <laughs> at that moment. But the thing is that he said, and, I, and from the deadly pestilence, I will deliver you. He will cover you with his pigments, and under his wing you will find refuge. The wing is the wing of the Holy Spirit. This is the wing of the Holy Spirit on the altar. You know, it's the wing of gold. If faithfulness is a shield and a buckler, you will not fear the terror of the night or the arrow that flies by day. And you know, uh, the f soon after I, will, I have received that, I was going in Montreal in the uh, Trans-Canadian Road, and I was running 110. And then, you know, I saw this little point. Me, I see nothing. You know? I cannot see the address, and the, it's so hard for me. But I saw this little dark point in the sky coming so fast, you know? And it seemed coming with an angle to hit me. I said, what is that? And uh, uh, around the, here to the, the, the wall the, of the, the chapel, you know, and this thing was dark and quick, and it received a slap, you know, like somebody would slap it. And the, the, she's going down, bound, and enter in my, uh, eat my car. So I pull out. I look under, there was nothing I make around, and when I arrived in front, it was in the bumper of the car. It was an uh, uh, iron crowbar. crowbar. Mechanic crowbar. Mechanic crowbar. I'm using it now. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's true. And you know, and the, the head of this was not bigger than my little finger, and it was in my bumper, just make a little hole and vibrating like that, you know. <laughs> and I pulled that and I arrive uh, to my friend priest, who is an engineer. He worked for the, you know, when they, they make, uh, for the NASA, when they make uh, the, the big spaceship. So, and he knows exactly the effect of everything, you know. So I tell him this story. He said, Michel, show me that. So I show him. He was, wow. He said, you know something? If this thing has hit you, as you said, normally the front of your will be destroyed because the, the, the impact was so great. And he said, nothing is there. So I said, I was just finishing my prayer and my, and my rosary and my prayer of St. Michael. You know, <laughs> this is him who slapped you know, this thing. or the arrow that flies by day, or the pestilence that, that stalk in darkness, or the destruction that weighs at noonday. Yeah, when we will be, you know, in a part of the world will be night, in the other part will be day. So some who are in the day 
will see the things. And some who are in the night will see also the things. Can be in the night or in the day, you will have testimony of the protection of God from your side. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. This is important because, you know, this is exactly what I mean when your feeling will be in peace. You will see falling the people around you. You will see the army of the enemy coming. This is why you don't have too much time to go to the refuge. Because, you know, the devil have already prepared the army to come and take the people. They want to chip the people. Chip is a good word. They want to chip the people. How they will do, do it? They will force them to do it. And the one who doesn't want to do it, they will be put, you know, as a chamber to be killed. And the other will be re-educated by the, the, the way that the devil thinks, by, you know, a, a kind of training that you can see in communist country already, you know, how to do. So you, you will not be affected. If your children have not je chosen Jesus, you will be healed also from this. It means that you will not fear, feel the, the pain of this abandon. But in the same time, when I say that, you must pray for them for this time. You know, this is one of the important time given to humanity after Christ have died on the cross and rise from the dead. It's a new spring for the church who is preparing now. So this is important that you pray that when the time of their free will will be not under the control of Satan, it's been during six weeks, you will have time to, you know, to see them come back to Jesus. And, uh, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the most high, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you. No scourge come near to your tent. And he said, one must be in state of grace to receive salvation. May those who are not baptized ask for the holy baptism for the salvation they hope for. Let those who are baptized rediscover the state of grace if they have lost it by their sin. Make sure this year, this year, not next one, to make a general confession by taking up the commandments of the Lord as the light of your lives and confessing all the sins committed or omitted. Resume the prayer of the rosary. Pray with the word of God. Keep fasting, if it's possible, on Wednesday and Friday for the salvation of sinners. And you have a message for us. To the Apostolic of Fraternity, St. Benedict Joseph Labry, I recall that the charisma of healing and liberation are exercised first by the fasting and the prayer. To all I say, be faithful. Do not be misled by the false doctrine of the devil. When he talks about the doctrine, he, he, he talks about philosophy in the world, philosophy in this communism part of the world, false teaching from the Freemason people, and also false teaching by this new age, preparation for this new religion who will accommodate everyone by the primitive believing. To all I say, be faithful. Ask the intervention of the heavenly armies at this time, which is yours. You will see the power of God unfold in the weakness. 
Me and all the angels with me are here to defend you and keep you against the assault of the evil one. And this is important. We must pray our guardian angel and all our angels. The blessing of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit accompanied you. From now on, he talked about from now on. It was, you know, January. The hour is coming. He doesn't say, he doesn't talk about the period. He talk about the hour. The hour is coming and the day is coming when you will see the salvation of God. Be careful today more than ever. We pray with the mother of God for the apostle of the last time to rise. It is you. Thank you for responding to the Lord's call. Saint Michael.